In this video we're going to be going over some more load development with this 7mm PRC rifle that it's a full custom rifle with an MDT HNT 26 chassis, terminus, Kratos action, proof prefit barrel, and then some other uh, peculiarities. So um, <clears throat> I'll put all the details of the equipment and the components and everything in the description, but today we're going to be shooting the 195 grain burger bullet again because that's what you guys had uh, polled or in the polls, surveys, whatever. You guys said that's what you wanted to see the most. So we're going to be trying these with H1000. We're going to be working from 63 grains to 67 grains in one grain increments. We're going to be shooting for groups, but we're also going to be watching for pressure a little bit because this should be max charge. So we're going to be hoping to get some really good accuracy. We're going to be tracking the velocity, but mainly we're going to uh, make sure that if we do get good groups and stuff, we're not getting any pressure signs that would make us nervous. So shooting it almost 100 yards, not quite, but we're pretty close. And we are going to be starting probably on the top left diamond. I'm going to put a cider on the paper with the first group that, or the first charge that we're going to be shooting the first group with just to make sure we're on paper. I have to fix the target right now because it just fell down. And uh, then we'll just see how it does. All right, first group is going to be 63 grains of H1000 behind that Burger 195. I'm going to be going for the dead center of the center diamond here, right in the middle of the target. I'm already feeling a little bit of a heavy bolt lift. The first shot that I put on paper as a cider didn't, but that one kind of felt a little sticky. Now, some of this brass, actually all this brass has been fired several times. I think it's on its third or fourth firing at this point. And <clears throat> some have had hotter loads ran through them and some have had cooler loads turned through. So ultimately it's it hasn't all been sized perfectly because even if you set your die up the same way, if the brass expanded more on some than it did on others, they're not gonna size all the same. So some of these may be just a little bit sticky because they didn't get sized enough, which is my fault and I'm not gonna blame the load. So we're gonna keep shooting, but I just wanna keep you guys informed as to what's going on here. Twenty-seven, seventeen. that one kind of felt the same. Brass looks okay though. The primers are not making me nervous by any means. See, that one felt fine. <laughs> the fourth round did not feel sticky. So, uh, decent group, actually. I'd say that's a good group, really, because this gun hasn't shot spectacular groups um, consistently. This powder, when we did a pressure test on it, it actually had some really tight spreads as far as the group size when we weren't even shooting for groups. So that was actually pretty encouraging. I, that's After going back and looking at a bunch of the data, I decided to go with some H1000 to do uh, this test with it because it seemed like it had some serious potential, but I never really expanded on that and went further with it. So that's a good first start. We are going to have to keep an eye on the pressure just because it seems like we're getting a little bit of a sticky bolt or heavy bolt lift, which is not good. But again, that might be a sizing issue. So whenever we start with a new lot of brass, hopefully we can get rid of that problem. But let's go over the velocities. I didn't do a very good job of say in the velocities that one was 2692 so the first shot I don't want to mention it because or rather I don't want to include it in the group because it was actually a fowler and the seating depth was different so technically there was a variable there that we need to remove so I'm gonna take that out the first shot that we shot in that group was 2707 and then the second one was 2717 and the last was 2692 so ultimately that gives us an extreme spread of 26 and a standard deviation of 11. So that's not fantastic, but it's it's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's it's a good spread, but it's not a great spread. We could be doing a little bit better. I did change the seating depth on these since we did the pressure test. The throat seems to have eroded a little bit, so I just went ahead and moved them out to what I felt comfortable with. To I normally try to keep it 20 to 40 thou from jam. Um, I'm not saying that I recommend that, but I just like knowing that it's not being jammed. I don't necessarily need to have it at a certain depth to be happy. I just want to make sure that it's safely away from the lands because I do not like the idea of jamming bullets. I think it's dangerous and I think it's 
to be blunt, kind of stupid. Um, but again, I am just trying to keep it safe and functional. So that one shot pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and continue the test. I am gonna stick the barrel cooler in here this time. It's warmer today than it has been for the last several months. So we're gonna go ahead and try to give this a little bit more of an opportunity to cool off before we shoot the next group. And then we'll repeat the process with 64 grains. And we're probably gonna go for the top left diamond. All right, next up is 64 grains of H1000. And we are going to be going for the top left diamond. Twenty-seven forty-nine. Still had a little bit of a heavy bolt lift on that. Yeah, I'm getting kind of clickers. I really don't want to blame this on a hot load. I honestly think I just didn't size these enough, which is 100% my fault. And I'm speculating. It could just be a hot load, but I just... I really think that this is a, a sizing problem because I've had this before. 2753. I don't know if I said that or not. Yeah, still getting clickers. Well, anyway, the velocity was 2734. All right, so our average muzzle velocity was 2745. We had an extreme spread of 19 and a standard deviation of 8.2. So obviously that was better than our first group. It looks like the group was really good too. We're shooting about half MOA, I think, on that second one. That first one might have been three quarter MOA. So we're not doing bad as far as accuracy is concerned. Both of these have shot well. Um, the spreads have been good. Uh, the first one was not as tight as that last one, but still not bad. And the, the accuracy has shown clear potential. So it's shooting good. Like this is, this is a good place to at least start as far as trying to find a good hunting load because I do ultimately want to use this gun for, for hunting this upcoming season. We shall see what that ends up turning into, but that's the, the ultimate goal right now. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep an eye on the pressure, um, keep feeling things out, try to keep the barrel somewhat cool. We're probably shooting it kind of warm right now, but we only have so much time. So we're gonna just try to be safe and get through this test and we'll see what happens. So next one is gonna be 65 grains of H1000 and we're gonna be shooting for the top of the center diamond. All right, next up is 65 grains of H1000 going for the top of the center diamond. $27.97. I'm getting pretty consistent heavier bolt lift, so I would recommend staying away from these charges just to be clear. $27.97. There's a clicker there. $27.79. Some of these loads, the, the spreads are decent on them, but I just, I would. I would not, if I were to tell you guys what to do, I wouldn't keep shooting these. If you're getting clickers like this and heavy bolt lift, I would just stay away from it. It's, it's, we're bordering on safety issues here. So I'm going to continue shooting this, but if it gets to the point to where it doesn't feel safe anymore, I'm stopping and I'm, I'm right on the edge of that. So I'm going to try to keep the barrel cool and see if we can get through this test. But I, I would highly suggest against continuing to shoot these. Just being up front with you guys. clicker I if I start with a new batch of brass we may not have this issue anymore because so many of these have been fired with different charges but we're consistently getting them which is what makes me a little nervous and honestly they may need to be sized just a touch more but we can't really do that at this point in the test 2781 was that velocity we're gonna go over that real quick and then I'm gonna run the barrel cooler for as long as I can Average velocity was 2786, extreme spread of 18, and a standard deviation of 8.1. So our velocity spreads are great, and our accuracy is great. For me at this point, I'm just kind of happy to see sub M away because again, this gun has shot some kind of crappy groups if I'm being honest. It shot some good ones, but not consistently. So it's shooting good overall. The velocity and the, the accuracy are seeming to be good. That group really wasn't great. It was probably sub MOA, barely. Maybe three quarter MOA. But anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of being picky at this point. Trying to figure out exactly what I'm shooting is not really relevant. I'm happy to see what it's putting on paper. I would like to see it a little bit tighter, but ultimately I'd like to see it uh, not have pressure signs. So 
we are working up to 66 grains now. Again, if I were to tell you guys what to do, I would say don't shoot these. I'm gonna run the barrel cooler as long as I can, and based on how this first shot is, we might stop. But I don't like having to pull bullets, especially when there's six left, but what's worth your life? You know what I mean? So um, maybe I need to follow my own advice here, but we're gonna cool this off. We're gonna come back. We're gonna hopefully shoot another group, but we'll see. All right, next up, we got 66 grains of H1000. We are shooting for the top right diamond here. Same clicker. 2839. I feel like the box kind of moved on me a little bit right before I took that shot, which was bad timing on my part, but it's windier down there than it is here. 2829 on that one. Twenty-eight thirty-two. So, I do have a theory. I think, honestly, this thing might just need a proper cleaning. It may have nothing to do with the sizing. It may have nothing to do with the seating depth. It may have nothing to do with the charge. I mean, these are these are supposed to be max charges, so they're not. Well, rather, this last group is supposed to be max charge. But this thing, I haven't smoothed out the fire cracking or anything in the barrel since we got it and it's probably got close to 200 rounds on it. So whether that's causing these issues or not, um, it needs to be done regardless. We need to go through there and smooth that off to try to reduce some of the, the friction and hopefully reduce some of the pressure. I don't know if I said it. I'm sorry I'm getting really bad about saying velocities, but 2832 was that last one. We'll go over the, the spread here in just a second. So that was actually our best spread yet. Our average muzzle velocity was 2834 extreme spread of 10 and a standard deviation of 4.3 so the group was good if we went through and we take care of that fire cracking in the barrel we give it a really good cleaning get it back down to bare metal and we take it back out and we try to reshoot that group with some properly resized brass same load honestly might work completely fine or we might have the exact same result where you get a good group you get a good velocity but you're getting pressure signs which are not safe and I don't recommend anybody do that but we will continue to test and maybe that's what will happen maybe we'll come back and all the the clickers and crap just goes away and um, we fix the issue I know that this is a, a magnum cartridge and you kind of need to take care of that more often than than smaller cartridges like 308 65 Creedmoor and stuff like that but still um, it's just lack of maintenance on my part so that's on me but I'm always learning so that's part of the process. We are on, We have one more group left. It's 67 grains. Really going to be keeping an eye on it as we go through it because they've all kind of felt the same from like the last two to three groups. Like the clickers don't feel much different and the brass kind of looks the same, but we are continuing to go up in charge, so it's worth keeping an eye on that stuff. We're going to cool off the barrel just a little bit more, and then we're probably going to go for the left side of the center diamond, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, we're going to make an attempt to shoot this last group here with... 67 grains of H1000. Going for the left side of the center diamond on this last group here. Twenty-eight eighty-one. Still got some pretty hardcore clickers. Twenty-seven, or I'm sorry, twenty-eight eighty. Again, the group opened up though for sure. 2886. Yeah, that's that's not good, guys. You don't want this. Okay, we got through the test, but here's the deal. This can literally damage your action. So, again, I look like an idiot doing this, but I'm trying to help you guys learn with me here, but I, I'm serious, like, you do this and you can literally tear up your action. So I really, really recommend that if you start getting heavy bolt lift and stuff, just don't keep shooting. Go home and pull the bullets. That's do as I say, not as I do, because it's, it's a safer option. We got through it. And we 
I mean, nothing catastrophic happened, but it's still just not a good idea. The group on that last one wasn't spectacular, but in the grand scheme of things, as hot as we just ran those, it really wasn't that bad. And the velocity was pretty darn consistent, so that's, that's kind of wild, to be honest. Kind of expected the velocity to get a lot more erratic on that last set there, but uh, <laughs> we had an average muzzle velocity of 2882, extreme spread of less than seven, and a standard deviation of 2.9. So the velocity was very, very consistent. The group was okay. I wouldn't probably choose that one if I had to pick. But again, this gun needs a very deep cleaning. And then after that, we'll have to do a little bit more testing. We might revisit some of these loads. But um, ultimately, in the condition that it's in right now, I would highly suggest against shooting stuff that's that feels that hot. Um, overall, not a bad day of shooting. In the grand scheme of things, we actually had a pretty good target. We had some really good velocity data. But I just need to give this barrel a little TLC, and then we'll go from there. But thank you guys again for watching. Please do me a favor, continue to vote in the polls that I put out to help me know what you guys want to see going forward on the channel. And uh, we'll hopefully see you on the next video. You guys take care, stay safe, be risen, and glorify God in all that you do. We'll see you in the next video.